that Isle of Butte was a very active place during the Second World War and unfortunately many islanders gave their lives overseas. More happily, a few budding celebrities were stationed here at that time, including Leslie Crowther, comedian and game show host, who spoke about his experience in an interview in the 90s. There's a story I, I could tell you, I will tell you if you like, about uh, being evacuated to the Isle of Butte. My mother went to the evacuation authorities. Now, that part of the war, there was no way that they were going to subsidise, and we hadn't got any money, there, were no, there was no way they were going to subsidise, Trey only subsidised the fare, and they didn't subsidise the, the digs when he got there, as it were. So my mother went to the local post office and took out for a telephone directory for West Scotland, and she took a pin out of her hat and she stuck it in the first page she opened, and she stuck it into the name and address of William Ritchie Hilton Farm, Rothsey Butte. And she went to the evacuation authorities and said, we know him at this address. And they gave us the train fare. So we went up to Hilton Farm, Rothsey Butte, and uh, we, w we flogged our way all up the, the half mile from, from Rothsey Airport and up to Hilton Farm, knocked on the door of this man and said, who the hell are you? And uh, my mother said, uh, we are your evacuees for the duration and produced the piece of paper that uh, supported her statement. And this fellow said, well, do you make good apple pie? Because I'm a bachelor. And my mother said, yes, I do, and she did. That was the sort of audition over. We went in and that was it. And we were there for about five months until the war in Europe finished. So during the Second World War, Leslie Crowther was based high on the hill behind me at Hilton Farm and just across the road here in Port Bannantyne. He went to the local school. Here's television's new exciting family game show. The price is right. And here's your host, Leslie Crowder. There's a queue outside the Arbeg Mini Mart. Tom Dodson, come on down. <laughs> Leslie, I love you. <laughs> I better explain this to you later at the wheel. Later on, all the contestants who've joined me on stage will have a chance to spin the wheel and win a place in our showcase final. That, of course, is all in the future. At the moment, we're more worried and concerned about the fact that there is an empty place in contestants' rows. So, Tom Dodgson, come on down. You are our next contestant on the Rise is Right. All right, Tom. Good well, lad. Now then, I want you all to give me your estimate of the price of this. A traditional design food mixer. <laughs> this lightweight portable mixer comes with all the modern attachments. A large capacity basin, a whisk and beaters. This mixer is tough, tough enough to take any beating you give it. Of course it will. That's what it's there for. Wonderful. Now then, Tom, what is your bid on the electronic... 75 pounds. 75 pounds. Thank you, Tom. 110. Marlene, what did you say? 110. 110 pounds, said Marlene. Well, we don't know, do we? Derek, what do you think? 160. 160, says Derek. Oh. A division of opinions there. Wendy, what do you think? 115. 115 pounds, says Wendy. The actual price we're looking for is 95 pounds. Tom, come and join me. Thank you very much. Over we go. Come over here, sir. That's very good. The 
Would you stay there? That's lovely. Well, Tom, what are you going to do with the food mixer? That's a loss. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you'll find somebody to do something with it for you. I'll send it Yes, of course you will, Tom. Of course you will. Now then, you've won the food mixer. How would you like to win this lot? A set of cane furniture. Tom, so seriously, you did appear on the first British edition of The Price is Right. How did that come about? Oh, that's right, Hugh. Well, we work for Jara Bank in the Midlands, in Birmingham, and we were part of the Civil Service Association, and when these shows wanted uh, coach loads of folk to come over, they'd contact the Civil Service, and uh, we'd all go and have a jolly. So when you went down there, did you have any idea about the format of the show beforehand? We all had absolutely no idea what the format was. It was a brand new uh, quiz show on TV. We all knew Leslie Crowther from Cracker Jack and everything else, but uh, we knew nothing about the show. And did you have any personal contact with them after the show or anything like that? Not really. What, what, one of the <coughs> strangest things was um, my slot on the show ran over an interval. And it was quite interesting that when you see on TV, you think, oh, everyone goes for a cup of tea, coffee, or the bathroom or something. But uh, no, you had to stand quite still. And uh, Leslie and I had a few words then. And I remember him saying to me, uh, are you a bit nervous, Tom? Oh, I said, oh, I'm not too bad, Leslie. <laughs> it, was, it was quite funny. And that was also, of course, the first show for him as well. I've been reading about it now, and I heard that the producer was initially in two minds about him or something. Aye, ah, well, the producer was... Uh, quite a well-known guy called William G. Stewart, who went oh. on to do 15 to 1. Right. Um, before the show started, um, he would come round the audience with an assistant, and they would uh, have a chat to all the different groups that they'd uh, got in the audience, uh, obviously looking for likely candidates to, to, call, to come on down. And uh, his assistant, there'd be some sort of key word between the two of them, and she'd make a note of people's names and... And besides that, they got the audience all hyped up with some disco music and dancers and a warm-up comedian and everything. So it was all it was all very well built up. It was quite fun. This matching furniture will brighten the look of any lounge or bedroom. A two-seater sofa and a pair of armchairs with detachable cushions in a sophisticated floral pattern. A glass top coffee table and a freestanding shelf unit, all of them designed with a sturdy cane framework to bring high fashion into your home. Good. Okay, Tom, now we're going to play the card game and I'll take it in stages for you. First of all, I want you to draw one of these cards, just one. This will determine the range of your bid. Just one of those cards. Thank you very much indeed. What does that say, Tom? Sixty pounds. Ah, of course it says sixty pounds. That's what we put it there. Now, that means that you have to get within sixty pounds of the price of that cane furniture without going over. All right? And this is how we do it. We play the card game. These are the cards. Now, we have added a naught to the face value of all of these cards. In other words, a two becomes a twenty, 5 becomes 50, 8 becomes 80, 10 becomes 100, and all the court cars are also worth 100. Okay? Good. We're going to start you off with 100 pounds. You draw a card. We add the value of that card to that 100 pounds. You carry on drawing cards, we carry on adding their value, until you think you have got within 60 pounds of the value of that furniture without going over. Then you stop, and we tell you whether you won or lost. You got that? I have. Good lad, draw a card. Okay. What is that? It's not, what, nine or ninety? Nine or ninety, that we you've got there, of course. You, he's got the idea. That's it. Indeed. You're gonna draw again? I am. Uh, you, he's gonna draw again, our Tom. Another nine, another nine. Nine of Tom. Okay. What are you gonna do now? I'll draw another card. Okay, draw another card. There we are, that is the seven of clubs. That's another 70, making three, oh, oh yes, yeah. 350. What do you think now? I'll take another card, I think. Okay, take another card, Tom, right. Another seven, the seven of diamonds. What are you gonna do now? 
420 it says. You've got to draw another card. They're giving you lots of advice out there. What do you think? I'll take another card. You're going to take another card. Okay, Tom, you're taking another card. That, oh, that's a low one. That is the two of clubs. That gives you 440. What are you going to do now? What are you going to do now? Some of your friends are telling you to stick. Some of them are telling you to draw another card. What you draw another one. He's got to draw another card. Okay. It's the six of spades, another 60. Now what are you going to do? Well, well, well. I'll stick on that. You're going to stick. Okay. That means... Okay. Now that, dear Tom, means that you, we're looking for a price, and you certainly are looking for a price for that cane furniture of between 500 and 560 pounds. Agreed? Agreed. Okay. Now then, you bid or stopped bidding at 500 pounds. The actual price of that furniture is 523 pounds. A difference of 23 pounds. Is that it? That's lovely. Uh, but the funny thing was. Um... I didn't have my own place then, and we won all this furniture on the show. And right. we, had to, we had to phone uh, Sharon's mother up and say, by the way, there's a load of furniture getting delivered to your house tomorrow. And the next day, a central TV van pulled up outside her house, uh, and all the local neighbours' curtains were twitching and everything. And there was a lot of uh, winnings on there, uh, washing machines, TVs, everything else. For other contestants, so all this had to come off before they offloaded the furniture that we won into Sharon's mom's house. So it was, uh, she was the talk of the uh, steamy, so to say. Right. Another famous name from 60s and 70s British television was Eric Morley, who was stationed behind me at the old Butte Arms Hotel in the Second World War. And if I swing round, Hopefully you can see the Winter's Gardens and this is where Eric Morley did his first ever production called Sinbad the Sailor. Eric was a bit of a controversial character, most famous for organising Miss World. I must admit this clip does not show him in too good a light. And Miss World 1974 is Miss Switzerland. <laughs> Haven't we got the road? Come on in here. Come on, say the thing. Look at her. Come on, wake up. Go up the steps. Come on. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Right. Now, in. Tie the robe. Round the back. Tie the robe. You've got to put it on. Look, on. Come on. You've done it before. Now, up. Stand up with the roll of the drum. Wait. Move. And slowly. Slowly. Turn right and go back. Six. Now, this camera here. Crack your neck. Look at that. Ah, stand still! You didn't do the key change. Now, fa move fast because you're behind time. Move fast because you're behind time. Move fast. Alley up. Come on, fast. Finally, I found this lovely clip of Leslie Crowther performing with the Isle of Buttes most famous and loved daughter, Lena Zavaroni. We bring you melodies from Selkirk to Sky. Old Lang Shang Sinai. Hello there. Hello there. It's amazing. A talking mushroom. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. I don't say that. She'll give them delusions of grandeur. Tonight we're going to sing for you. I can't think why. The last no harm. A song once sung by Moira Anderson. I know the woman. Know her well. 
She once did a program, you know, accompanied by three gurus on their instruments. Oh. Sitars on Sunday. <laughs> You've seen more life in a redundant haggis. This song is for every husband she's saying to his way. Hey, excuse me, I don't know the words, so please release me and let me go. It's what you should sing to her when you've got her in your arms. I don't know shake, rattle and roll either. It's crow, try a little Oh, I see. It's a comedy song. <laughs> she may be weary. Women do get weary. It's very true. I'm tired of mine. <laughs> wearing the same shabby dress. Shabby nothing. She's been wearing the same one for the last 25 years. And the veil and train are still as good as new. <laughs> and while she's weary, try a little ten. Very true. Make her fish in one bucket of coal instead of two. You know she's waiting. Just anticipating. That's very true, too. When I come home on pay nights, she's on starting blocks. <laughs> Things she may never possess. Also true, she still hasn't finished paying for the dress. <laughs> and while she's weary, try a little ten. Excuse me interrupting just for a moment here, just for a wee while. Last time I crept up behind her surreptitiously, you understand, so that she wouldn't see me coming. <laughs> Put my arms around her waist. She murmured gently, two pints please, melt one. <laughs> yes, yeah, it's called her mother. She would have been here, but she's very busy, swinging up and down Loch Ness for the tourists. <laughs> Delsa. <laughs> Makes it easier to bear. I saw her bear once. Not her, you understand. Lovely wee body. I mean her mother. Dear God. <laughs> Reminds me, oven-ready turkeys are cheaper this week. <laughs> 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 